Now this is going to be going over your face like this, so try not yeah, to distract. Yeah, I got it. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Julia. Hello. Hi. So um, I wanted to first ask you, like, what um, what inspired you to start creating music? Um, I honestly just always did it. It was actually coming back to it full time that was more of an inspiration. Like I, I just, it was one of those things where. I loved hearing about people, why they tick, and, or what makes them tick, and how they heal through things, and how they express, and so for me, I would, I would love to connect to people on those levels and then turn it into songs. And I actually started writing songs when I was about four or five years old. I mean, they weren't great. They were about things that a four or five year old cares about, but it's just what I always did. And then... Uh, after working in the news industry for a little bit, I was just inspired to do my own thing. I didn't want to boss. I didn't want to report on stories that were not meaningful to me. And so I just kind of found my way back. Yeah. And what is meaningful for you in life? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, casual question. Um, <laughs> the For me, the human connection is, I think, the most meaningful thing because... Ultimately, without that, um, I don't think travel or success or work or anything would have significance if there was no one to share it with. And so I've learned to really value the people in my life and my relationships that I've made and um, to just through social media and what I've been building to profile other people who are actually stepping in and, and changing things and standing for causes and uh, and connecting with others. Yeah, that's beautiful. Can you name a time when you felt that music was your savior or something that really helped you out? Yeah, I mean, I think music has helped me, has saved me, I guess, multiple times. There were... Uh, the first thing that really stands out, um, I went through, I've, I've had really bad stomach issues because I'm allergic to a couple of different things, but I didn't know that seven years ago. And so I started losing a lot of weight. And then I started losing all my energy. And then I would, I literally would eat a meal and I'd have to run to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. So it became this sort of, uh, it went from like, ooh, I have a six pack, because I was like, you know, just losing weight to like, oh my god, my bones are popping out and I look anorexic and no doctor could tell me what was wrong. I went to the best doctors in New York City and I was seeing holistic specialists and no one could figure out what um, was going on. And so basically I actually got to a point where I was like, okay, I have no social life. I had a boyfriend at the time, but I, we ended up breaking up because I just think he couldn't handle what I was going through. So that made it even worse because I was already in such a low spot and then to get dumped was like, I just kind of felt like no self-worth, no hope. I, I really didn't have any hope because I, I didn't, I was being told that, you know, I had one person say like, oh, it's all in your head. It's, you're like really stressed out. I'm like, okay, I'm not that stressed. Like I can't eat food. My body's pushing out food. Um, and so I, the only thing I literally, the only thing I could do was play piano. And so I, I had my keyboard set up and, um, yeah, I mean, luckily I had saved up enough, saved up enough money at that point to be able to continue paying my rent, but it's sort of the only thing that really it was, I haven't, even as I'm saying it, it's, I haven't really even thought about it. It was the only thing I looked forward to was being able to keep writing songs. And um, and luckily, I finally found a good doctor who I had. He told me I had parasites and then food allergies. Sorry to hear that. So it was a simple fix with two pills and then changing my diet. And so, yeah. Um, but I just remember that. I remember. I mean, talking about the love loss on top of everything. I think I might have been able to handle it better if, if things were going well in my life. But I literally couldn't even. You know, I'd read these articles about breakups, and they're like, get out there and, like, start a new workout and make new friends and do this. And I, I'm like, I can't leave my apartment. So I was sitting there dwelling and 
just, just, I, 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 oh man, I just remember that time being so, um, just like what, like I was like, okay, if I die right now, I'd be okay with that, which is such a weird thing to think now, you know, here in California, happy, making music as my full-time living, it's just crazy if I had stopped, you know. And I'm so glad you didn't, and you kept pushing forward. Yeah. Um, what's a good, what's a song that really represents um, kind of like your, your, your breaking through mm. the darkness, the pain? Yeah. Um, I mean, I have, I have a song called Letting You Go, which is, about that, it's, it was written in that time, um, which is actually my most played song on Spotify, and the most sales come from that song, ironically enough, because, I mean, it's not ironic, it was like written from like a purely raw place. Um, but getting that out, and then getting excited when I would play it for people, and they're like, this is, this is a good song. That started to get me excited, and when I could you know, when I started feeling better and I could perform that live and seeing people react to it um, was just, like I would actually get excited if people would cry when I played that song and I, the only way I can explain that is it just meant that I was able to do the thing that I think most artists go through their whole life wanting to do and that's to touch people in some way and to, to give them a song or a painting or a TV show or film that just uh, resonates with people. And so that was the first time that I had written a song that did that. It was before that. It was very Taylor Swifty and fun and like, which she's great. But um, yeah, so that song kind of ended up turning things really around. So yeah. And with Letting Go, uh, can you? Give us a bit of the lyrics and letting go that really kind of reflected a, a real life situation. Sure. Um, yeah, so it's, I mean, the beginning is uh, I'm not looking for love tonight. I'm looking for someone who can take you off my mind. So give me Jack and Coke and someone I don't know because I need to numb everything inside. And then, the, then there's more, and then the chorus is, uh, I'm giving up this fight, I made up my mind, I made up my mind, there is nothing more to hold, I'm letting you go, letting you go. So, just to be very clear, the fight I was giving up was holding on to that relationship um, and what that signified to me. I think that was the only, during that time, it was the only stability and the only source of happiness so to have that removed and then have to go and like let that go it actually while it was very painful it freed me to start um, filling those voids that the relationship kind of covered and so um, yeah and then from there the songs started to change a bit more into um, positive and I still write, love writing love songs. I mean, that's my favorite, but the tone has changed a little bit. Yeah. Since. Your song, Letting Go, was one of the first breakout songs you've written that really spoke from a place of loss. Mm -hmm. And um, in that experience of like putting it out on paper, putting it out in music and writing, what was the emotional process like for you? Uh, you know, it's actually interesting because it's so, it takes, so, so a lot of times when I write it, there are moments that, um, things come up that really resonate. So, so, so sometimes when, with the writing process, it's like, okay, I'm not really going there. Like, I'm not saying, I'm not, like, I'm saying things that don't really resonate with me. And, I mean, I'd have moments 
where I was writing in general or I would just break down and cry or um, frustration was a big thing because I just wasn't able to express what I was going through the way I wanted to because I was never had never gone through anything like that and I wasn't talking to people about it and so on one hand it was like this this great outlet kind of like a friend that would always be there like always something that I could depend on and I would always feel a little bit better when I played but letting you go is really interesting because that was one song that just it, within half an hour I wrote it because I think I was just open um, and that's actually I was talking about this yesterday with a friend there's going through those breakups uh, actually can completely open your heart and show vulnerability that for me that I've never experienced and especially living in New York City at tw I was 21 or 20 um, it just it was like I had this hardened New York version of myself that I'd created and all of a sudden it was like all the walls came down because there was nothing to lose there's there's just pure um, heart it's like all I felt is that I just felt like I was living in that space so it was actually this now that I look back it was sort of this beautiful gift um, which I think if I can speak on behalf of myself is impossible to see at the time it's just this like I'll never get through this I don't want to get through this I just want to not feel this pain anymore I want it to be over but to to look back I'm like wow I wrote the most songs I'd ever written during that time I had letting you go just kind of come to me because I was open to it and I cried a lot and learned a lot about myself and um, yeah I think you know I just I went through this with my cousin because she went through a breakup about a year ago and she actually the day that it happened, she drove her car into a tree at my grandma's house, and she survived it, but um, I've been really worried about her because she won't talk about it, and she's not expressing in any way, and it's sort of this thing that has been pushed aside, and, and so, I mean, I just even love what you're doing with empowering other people to actually find that because I, I'm worried about her, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, I guess just, just going, I'm, I'm, again, like, even as I'm saying it, I really haven't thought about this, but I'm, I'm so appreciative to have had that outlet to, to turn to. Yeah. And thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Um, Your song that I heard personally that day, it really, it gave me tingles. It was um, Painkiller. Mm. Mm -hmm. Is that a recent song that you've written? Yeah, so Painkiller was, uh, I mean, another cousin actually was, uh, he broke his back and he snowboarding and they put him on painkillers. And then he got addicted, as I think it's something crazy, like 50% of people get addicted, which is, like, why do we keep giving them to people? Um, and then, so from there, he started doing heroin. And so he has just sort of detached from reality. He's very numb, even when he's not... I mean, he's not doing heroin anymore that we know of, mm -hmm. but it's kind of hard to, to tell with those kind of addictions. And so he the, the, when I started thinking about it it was like I felt all of this empathy for him at first and then I felt frustration um, that he wasn't open to help or open to anything that the family said and then I realized that it's really not that far from you know I have things that I use as painkillers and everyone does and so that kind of inspired the song and the first line is, don't tell me to quit, because I don't have a problem. But it's not, it's like, that's, I think, just, I don't know, for me, I've had things in my life where I'm like, that's not an issue, I'm fine, like, what do you mean? So, 
And for me, like I talked about that night, for a while it was like my numbing thing was just having very meaningless relationships, flings, men, just like in and out of my life and just sort of like these really crazy, like like fighting and emotionally abusive things and just like it was this addiction to it. And then when I'd find someone who's really sweet and loving and would treat me right, I'd just be like, yeah, you know. So I had to realize that about myself and be like, it's really a pattern I want to do repeat my whole life, or do I want to say, like, no, I'll go through, like, the pain of being alone, learning how to be on my own two feet, and getting healthy, so I attract someone healthy, so, um, no, I mean, I'm, I'm, I mean, what resonated with you about it? Um, no, I'm not supposed to ask you No, 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 it, it, okay. it, absolutely, um, it, I wish I had the lyrics in front of me, um, but it was, it was, it was the need to have a painkiller. Mm. You know, it's so honest because mm. we all need painkillers, you know, yeah. and to have, and, and one of the first things you said was um, that you you do music because you want to connect with people. And so, <clears throat> you know, as a musician, you're a storyteller as well. And the best stories are the ones that come from a place of experience mm -hmm. and honesty. Yeah. And so I, I think uh, for me personally, the painkiller song, I I resonated on the relationship level as well. Mm -hmm. This constant need to like find someone to like fix me or mm -hmm. fill me or some way somehow. And um, I was also inspired by um, how you dedicated this to your cousin. Mm -hmm. um, and so. In Painkiller, I wanted to see what parts of the lyrics were um, directly inspired, like the process of writing that, yeah. you know? Well, it was interesting because I wrote it with, it was a co writing session, so there were, it was three people. And when I told them that, because it was, it, was, it, it was happening right then, like, it was so weird for me because I had this one cousin on one side of my family try to or an attempt of suicide and then right after that I found out my other cousin was in the hospital because he had overdosed on heroin but didn't actually die so it was like these two things where they both were so close to death and both so close to me and my family it was just this sort of a weird thing to have happening at the same time and so um, with Laith I just so I went into the session and I said, I have to write about this. And I don't know how. And it started first, it was like very focused on the heroin. And that's kind of when I had this epiphany, when I, when I was talking to the, the guys about why I wanted to write it. Um, I was like, wait a minute, this isn't about a specific thing. Like, we, like I said, we all, have, we all have this. Like, I have this. And so I was like, can we get into that place of things that we do? And so... Um, the don't tell me to quit because I don't have a problem was something that my cousin actually said, basically. So, um, and then just one hit, you're my only option. Just one hit could mean anything. And you're my only option could mean it's that feeling of just, if you leave me, I can't live. Or if I don't have this, this string, or if I don't go party, or if I don't, you know, have do this thing that I need so badly, like I can't go on, which is never a good place to be. And, um, so I think the chorus, um, I, the, the guy that specifically helped write the chorus part, his name is Jesty, and it's, uh, it's so good now, but it won't be forever. Break me down, and then you make me better. This is how you fall in love with a painkiller. Um, it was just, that was inspired by watching Laith, just like literally like my cousin just like break, I shouldn't say his name. That was inspired by watching my cousin just like break down. Um, that was inspired by watching my cousin just break down and and have nothing but this one thing to make that he needed so badly to like live. Um, so we'll, we'll cut his name out. So yeah, thank you. No I worries about that. It. No, yeah. we we do editing, okay. so it's all good. Um, wow. I mean, it it sounds like it was a whole process of like um, 
first doing it for someone else that you love so genuinely and then through that process of writing you discover something about yourself almost like oh, a yeah. mirror it, it oh, is yeah. a mirror um is this the one is it coming out um painkiller so it's on the radio and well and so a dj took it and made it which is so weird for me because this song comes like from such a soulful place but a dj actually took it and made it into a dance version and mm -hmm. it's actually pretty cool they didn't they didn't take away from the emotion of the song um you just dance now when you hear it instead of cry um so it's DJ Shift did his mix, and it's on the radio in Arizona and some of the, um, which I just found out. I had no idea where it was playing. So it's like in Arizona, and it's starting to kind of spread organically that way. So okay. hopefully the, they're releasing the dance video in a few weeks, I think. Wow. So hopefully that'll get some traction. And that's the, and, and I like to kind of transition to kind of where um, one can take something that's so painful and then transform it into something just beautiful and so giving and gifting to yeah. the population. So let's talk a little bit more about what you, what your experience is connecting with audiences when you're performing live, when you're, you know, at the studio producing, um, and when you're performing, yeah. Yeah, I think that was one of the things I realized this year because I'd been building so much of my brand on social media and I just realized that I love being live. I love the energy of people. I went to Burning Man for the first time two years ago and have you, I don't know if you've been, but I will. Okay, yeah, I was like, <laughs> they, the whole thing is, or the whole finale is this watching the man burn and everyone watches it and I couldn't watch that. I just had to watch the people watching it and seeing the enjoyment they were getting from it, seeing their eyes light up and like just the energy of them. Like, whew. and so and I remember because I was there with my ex, my ex boyfriend now, and he's like, Julia, you're missing it. And I was like, you're missing it. Like, look at the people. And I was just like watching them. Like, I was like, this is why I do what I do. Um, that it's just that being able to. Because like, when I used to perform, I would be in my head and I would want things to be perfect. But then over time, it just changed. And I just get into this place of like complete release and letting go. And it's sort of this spiritual experience of connecting with um, just whoever's there and whoever's open to it and just sort of working off of that too. Like it really does feel collaborative when I perform. I don't feel like it has anything. I'm not like, oh, I'm on stage, like rock star. I'm like just there and I'm like, in this thing that I, I, it's almost like a magical experience of creating something with the audience. And so for me to have those feelings, that's where I'm like, okay, this is me and my living my purpose. Whereas sometimes like this, the social media and even the recording studio, I like it, but there's nothing like playing live. Mm -hmm. So yeah. go look at this camera right here uh -huh. and um, just let people know what your ultimate definition of the love story is? Hmm. I think the love story is falling in love with yourself. And I, th I think what that means is like, you know, I remember when I was 16 and I went through my first breakup and I was sad, but I wasn't devastated. And it was like, I know it's different as you get older, it's different levels of love, but I was so happy with what I was doing and I was so confident in myself and I was like, there are so many other people out there and it's sad it didn't work and I'm going through the loss of a first love, but I wasn't, I was okay. And so I think that's the thing that I've learned from my own breakups, which I've had quite a few at this point, is there's always a lesson there are always multiple lessons and they've each made me a better person and more aware of the, the things that I need to work on. But I also tend to look back and I'm like, oh, okay, that relationship was holding me down to this one place where I wouldn't be able to grow. And so I think the love story is, is really learning how to 
not just survive, but to really fall in love with who you are and your flaws and to be willing to say to someone, I love myself and this is who I am and if that doesn't work for you, that's okay. But this is like my ultimate love of my life is me.